Hey everybody, it's Tracy Hamlin reminding you to join us every Monday night for an entire hour. We are chatting it up with some amazingly phenomenal recording artists that you need to know about, as well as some incredible and inspiring small business owners from my area that you need to know about. So join us for an entire hour every Monday night. Leave a comment on my social media. Let me know who you've enjoyed and who we need to have on the Tracy Hamlin Show. See you on Mondays and ooches of spooches. Just like you used to do, honey. Love me tender on and on for a whole night through. Oh, I'm yearning for your sweet love. Won't you bring it back? Bring it back. Oh, bring your sweet loving back. Bring it back, baby. Cause I need your loving. Bring your sweet loving back. Bring it back, baby. Cause I want your loving. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, hey. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hard to say where we went wrong. Well, it's time to start a new. Remember those precious moments that we shared. Oh, oh, I'm yearning for your sweet love. I oh, want you bring it back, bring it back. Woo! Bring your sweet loving back. Oh, bring it back, baby, cause I need your loving. Bring your sweet loving back. Bring it back, baby, cause I want your loving now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Hello and welcome to the Tracy Hamlin Show. I am international recording artist and owner of the Sweet Jazz Concert Series. The Sweet Jazz Concert Series uses music as a catalyst to give back to the community. And I'm so happy to announce that on Sunday, May 1st, the Sweet Jazz Concert will take place at River Creek Club in Leesburg, Virginia, featuring saxophonist, vocalist, and flautist Paula Atherton and me. Partial proceeds from each of the Sweet Jazz Concert um, concert series goes to support music scholarships as well as a donation to a local charity. And for this particular event, the local charity is Loud and Abused Women's Shelter. And we're so happy that they have accepted that they're going to, they will be accepting the donation from the Sweet Jazz Concert. My short song today was called Bring Your Sweet Loving Back. And it's a song that was released on my third album entitled This Is Your Life, and it's available on all digital platforms. The Tracy Hamlin Show is so excited to be a platform for quality talent that you need to know about, as well as amazing small businesses that you need to know about. On today's show, I am delighted to finally have an amazing R&B singer who hails from Puerto Rico, and his name is Isma. I can't wait for you guys to meet him. But first, we're going to kick things off with an amazing small business owner who, at 24 years old, is editor-in-chief and founder of Abide Magazine. Hello, Joy Cato, and welcome to the show. You're muted. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> Yay. 
Uh, we're, I'm so happy to finally to have you on the show. I heard about you a few weeks ago and I was just so touched that at such a young age, you have this amazing magazine. So tell me what inspired you to create your own magazine? Sure. Well, in college, I went to Temple in Philly. Um, and while I was there, I just felt a very, uh, I felt like I didn't have any community there. I had a very deep sense of loneliness. And while my other peers were, were kind of finding their spot and where they belong, I was struggling. So I kind of noticed that that's something, you know, younger Christian, even diverse people of different skin types can feel from time to time. So I wanted to create a platform, a resource, a place where um, young Christian women from all different types of life can feel like they belong and are cared for in a holistic way. I love that. So growing up, did you always want to be in media? No, I wanted to be an event planner <laughs> um, when I grew up. I actually went to Temple for a hospitality degree. I wanted to be I, in minoring in event planning, but ended up finding that it just wasn't as fulfilling. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't as fulfilling as I thought it would be. And that's when I went into praying and fasting of what I should do next. And God showed me journalism. Awesome. I love that. So abide magazine what is the inspiration behind the name the name the name took a while to come up with <laughs> yeah it took a while to come up with um but it was laid on my heart because i wanted the mission is to translate faith into lifestyle i believe the best way we can get everything out of this life squeeze every bit of best thing that god has for us is to surrender our entire lives to him, abide and abide to his will in every aspect of our life. You know, our health, our wellness, even our style or fashion, our, our uh, career finance, surrender it to him, abide to his will. And so that's why I was named Abide because we cover all of those sections and, uh, and apply it to faith, put it in the context of faith. Well, I mean, I love many things about your magazine. First of all, the quality is just amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, I think at any age, deciding you want to start your own magazine is a huge undertaking. How did you know what to do? Like, how did you know, hey, um, this is like, did you call somebody? Do you know somebody that had their own magazine? Nope. <laughs> I um, went to, I mean, I went to school for journalism and I took many courses on magazine design, magazine writing. So I had an idea of how to do the editorial. I knew how to do the editorial. It's the the art that was a challenge for me. The, the um, who's going to design it, who's going to do the photographs, who's going to do the hair and makeup, all that stuff. So for that issue that you have in your hand, I mean, I pulled my cousin's my brother, my brother took that photo on the cover. <laughs> my I cousin styled those girls on the cover. So it was just me pulling like my community around me to make it happen. This, I mean, it's, I mean, your story is so inspiring. And again, the quality Thank of this you. magazine, when I heard about it and when I received it, I mean, before I received it, they said, you're going to be really impressed. And <laughs> of who referred, I was like, I know he wouldn't tell me that if he mm -hmm. didn't mean. And when I got it, I mean, it's colorful. And I just, I love earlier today, a group of us, we were talking about just the white spaces. Mm -hmm. And we just, had a great designer as well. Mm -hmm. the design, the designer yeah. is amazing. And it's interesting because you went into event planning. And, and as an event planner, you have to wear many hats. It's yes. a whole lot of moving parts. So I imagine just having those, that skill set allowed you to transfer those skills to having your own magazine. Yes. So I'm so impressed with this. So bye, Thank bye, you bye. so much. Well, we are going to take a short break and we will be right back with Miss Joy Cato. So you guys hang in there with us. We'll be right back on the Tracy Hamlin Show. Are you a jazz lover? 
If so, have we got something special for you. Presenting Tracy Hamlin's Sweet Jazz Concerts. The first concert of 2022 is Sunday, May 1st, with saxophonist Paula Atherton and the songstress herself, Tracy Hamlin, at the River Creek Country Club in Leesburg, Virginia. Sunday, May 1st at 4 p.m. For more information and tickets, visit www.sweetjazzconcerts.com. Sponsored by the Bank of Clark. I'm Charles Meriday and I'm in the restaurant business. In my 20 years as a chef and restaurant owner, I've been able to work and eat in some of the great kitchens around the globe. There's a whole side of the restaurant that most people will never get to see. So now, I want to take you to the back of the house, into kitchens of some of the best chefs in the world. Along the way, I'll share some of my own tips and recipes so you can cook like a pro too. So join me in the back of the house for a whole new perspective on cooking and food. Magazine Joy Cato. Hey. So Joy, um, as editor in 
what are some of your primary responsibilities? Mm, there's so many, <laughs> especially because our team is a, a little small right now. So mm -hmm. it's everything. It's, you know, I do a lot of the writing in the articles. Mm -hmm. so I'm interviewing, I'm writing, I'm editing. I'm also um, managing our small team, our social media team, I'm, you know, um, creating content for social media. I'm designing the website. I'm planning all the content. So it was a lot of different things. I'm also handling like the finance side and the, and the partnership side and the, the, you know, the advertisements and stuff like that. So it's definitely a lot um, on one person, but oh, we're that's why I wanted you to share. I mean, it's just so impressive that you're handling all of this. So who is your target audience? Millennial and Gen Z uh, women of faith. Um, and a diverse pool of women is our target audience. I love that. Mm -hmm. So as a small business owner, what would you say your greatest challenge has been? I think overcoming um, the struggles just within myself. Um, mm -hmm. I would say not surrendering to my mental health, you know, like not surrendering to anxiety and feelings of like doubt and insecurity and I'm not good enough and I can't do this. I've really learned to just accept that, okay, maybe I can't do it by myself, but God working through me can do it. So I've just surrendered everything, even if it's very little, <laughs> even if I don't have much, I give it to him and he's all, and he's continued to multiply it. So that's been what I'm working at. Just if I'm afraid, I do it afraid. If I'm anxious, I do it anxious. Mm -hmm. Can you come and talk to some 40 and 50 year olds that I know? <laughs> I just, your story is just incredible and your maturity is just, it's so empowering. And I'm just, I'm loving hearing all about your story. So, I mean, the maturity is there. Who are some of your greatest influences? Like, where do you think this level of maturity comes from for? that, you know, that has led you on this amazing path? I think I'm blessed enough to have a lot of different people in my life that I can look up to. My mom definitely being one of them. She's been yeah. like um, a rock of mine during this whole thing. Um, I couldn't do it without her. But I have a lot of role models that are close to me, like my dad has his, is a pastor of his own church and he travels the world just giving to other people, just giving, giving, giving. My grandfather, um, a bishop of his church. He also just gives, gives to his community. So it's just always been there. You know, I've always seen a high standard of where, how we should live. Yeah. And you know, it, you have a strong foundation and I think that is so mm -hmm. important and clearly a, a testament to the journey, the amazing journey that you're on. So when you decide, when you decided to start Abide, how much time did it take from you deciding to start the magazine to actually launching it? Hmm. I think I decided I wanted to do something like this mm -hmm. um, my senior year of college. I mean, I had several blogs before this, but never as serious as like Abide. It just kept growing and growing into a serious thing. And so I'd say, I think I got the name like after I graduated college, right after my senior year. And it came out maybe, maybe four or five months later. And at that time it was just in the form of a website. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say a, a couple more months later, we actually started to put the content into a physical magazine. Incredible. That is just incredible. Mm -hmm. so, um, is Can you offer any advice or a nugget of inspiration to someone out there that may be your age or older that is thinking about starting their own business, stepping out on faith? Do you have any, any nuggets of information, um, inspiration to offer? Yeah, I would say that Wherever you are in life, you can start now. You don't have to reach a certain place where you think you have it together. Like, okay, now I can start. When I reach, when I have this amount of money, when I get this degree, now I can start. Once you get the green light from God to go, you can go. You know, don't wait around. Just, you can start now. You can start now. Even if you have um, things 
holding you back? Like everyone has their challenge to overcome to reach their goal. You don't have to wait for that challenge to disappear or start. Absolutely. And um, something that you mentioned a little bit earlier was just feeling um, like you're not enough and just Mm -hmm. dealing with your own insecurities. I think that that happens across the board with most people, but a lot of people don't really talk about it. So I'm glad you were able to share because I know that you're, you know, they say you've done a a mighty thing if you've touched one soul, one heart. But I know just today you're touching many because I know that Mm -hmm. you're absolutely speaking to me. And I'm consistently telling people if, you know, you just have to, you know, the Nike slogan is just do it. Because people will say, um, I can't afford to go on vacation. I can't afford to get married. I can't afford to start a family. And it's like, it's, if you wait until you can afford it, it's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. So I love that you're saying that, you know, and, and a common theme from all of my small business owners um, that appear on the show is that you have to be willing to invest in yourself and take the risk and step out on faith. Yeah. And I mean, it's very clear that, Yours, you know, it's paying off for you. I want to just show this magazine. <laughs> so, give me a favor and tell folks where they can get the magazine, how often mm-hmm. it comes. Out. Oh, wait a minute! One quick question for you: Is it available digitally too, or just hard copies, or both? So it's digital. What you're holding right now is like you know limited. <laughs> so it's digital, and you can go to. Um, www.abide, the name of the magazine, abidemag.org. So www.abidemag.org. And you can, um, yes, Mm -hmm. and you can purchase a digital copy. That's our first issue. And we have another issue that's available. Awesome. And back to another thing that you said earlier with your brother designing and calling on your family members. We all do that. And for any aspiring entrepreneurs and small business owners, you have to pull on your village. I mean, I remember I had a major event and there was no money for a limousine service. So I called my brothers and my, my transportation company was Hamlin Transportation. So I was like, <laughs> go pick up this artist and you need to come pick up that one. But it worked and it yeah. ran very smoothly because we were all organized, but I had to pull on my village and mm-hmm. make all the difference in the world. So what's next for Joy Cato? Well, um, our third issue is coming out in May, I believe May 1st. And if that one looks great to you, just wait to the third because, you know, we've encountered the more resources that we needed to reach the even more of a quality publication. So be out, be on the lookout for that on May 1st. and what's next? I just want to continue to grow Abide into, you know, a media company that takes care of younger Christian women. I love it. And how many people are working with you now? Three. There are like three people on my team right now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. And we're looking to, you know, grow it, start an internship program and everything. Oh, that is really awesome. How soon are you looking to to find interns because I just came across a few from um, being on a panel a couple of weeks ago. So there could be some, some in there that may be of interest to you. Yeah, as soon as possible. (laughs) Cause you know, like I said, we have, sometimes we can get caught up in the little things of running the publication and the business. We don't have time for the bigger things that will actually help us to scale. So that's what we're looking for, you know, to, Fill those positions as soon as possible. Awesome. Well, I tell you, I cannot thank you enough for stopping by to chat with us and share your story. I know you have touched the hearts and souls of many because (laughs) your story is very inspirational. So thank thank you you so much for joining us. And I wish you much success. Thank you so much. I'll be be keeping up with you because I, you know, like I said, I'm a fan. (laughs) So, Joy Cato on the Tracy Hamlin Show. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Thanks again, Joy. Thank you. Bye.
I used to watch BET, MTV, VH1. Now I watch Tempo. Soca, Calypso, Reggae, Dance Hall. Don't star, better get tuned in to the Tempo. Don't have cable, they got an app. Go to your app store, download that. Whether it's tourism, cuisine, or the social scenes, if it ain't Tempo, it's a wrap. Who got the Caribbean views? Tempo. Mr. Vegas in Caribbean news. Tempo. You trying to cook Caribbean food? Tempo. You know they got the music videos too. Tempo. Who got the Caribbean views? Tempo. Mr. Vegas in Caribbean news. Tempo. You trying to cook Caribbean food? Tempo. You know they got the music videos too. Tempo. Superhuman With songs such as Feel the Same And his sultry latest single Chill Back Relax Before I Yzma is superhuman. Order your copy now at yzmamusic.com. Are you a jazz lover? If so, have we got something special for you. Presenting Tracy Hamlin's Sweet Jazz Concerts. The first concert of 2022 is Sunday, May 1st, with saxophonist Paula Atherton and the songstress herself, Tracy Hamlin, at the River Creek Country Club in Leesburg, Virginia. Sunday, May 1st at 4 p.m. For more information and tickets, visit www.sweetjazzconcerts.com. Sponsored by the Bank of Clark. Are you ready for the Tracy Hamlin Show? Welcome back to the Tracy Hamlin Show. I have to tell you guys, I'd be jamming on the commercial breaks, okay? Uh, welcome back. I am so excited about this next guest as well. I'm just, I'm just so tickled pink that I'm able to get all of these, all of these quality, amazing business owners and recording artists on my show. So next we have an amazing R&B singer. He's a songwriter and he hails from Puerto Rico. Welcome to the show, Isma. Hey, what's up, Tracy? Hey, 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 how are you? I'm doing good. You know, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Happy to have you here. And I knew you were going to come looking amazing, loving the look and the hat. Thank you. You look fabulous as well, as usual. Oh, bless you. So tell me, what inspired you to become a recording artist? Um, so I grew up in a very, very musical family. So my, my fondest memories are going way back to Puerto Rico when I was, um, young. And, um, I just remember like Christmas and like all the holidays, all we did was sing, um, instruments were playing, um, going to people's houses, like, and just food. But um, good food. But I know. Oh, I'm sure. What? But um, but yeah, I just remember a lot of like music, and as I grew up, I you know, it, it kind of just became me, and um, and I love it. Like music is, is everything. It's such a healer. It's such, it's my therapy. It yes, therapy. It's a healer. Absolutely right. Do you play any instruments? I don't. I'm. I want to learn, but I don't play any instruments. But you're an amazing songwriter. Thank amazing. you so much. So as a songwriter, tell me about your process. In your process of writing, do, do the lyrics come first? Or? Sometimes the lyrics, sometimes I do it to music. But I also, you know, a story when I was younger. Um, I remember I used to just come up with songs like just just I, I don't know we're just singing these songs I 
I was like probably like seven years old. I was on the toilet and I'm just like singing these songs on the toilet. No, but that's real talk. You're not the only one. That's real talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with your when you're writing songs, where does your inspiration come from? Well, it just all depends. Sometimes it's something that I'm going through, something that I went through. A lot of the stuff I have gone through, I'm not in that space no longer, but um, I've gone through, or I, or if I am still in that space, I, you know, it comes from that. And I also write songs from, you know, what's happening in the world or what um, my friends are going through. Like if I, sometimes my friends tell me their problems in my head, I'm like, whoa, this is a song right here. <laughs> You know, I've gotten some of my greatest inspirations to write. Um, I had a girlfriend going through a terrible breakup and we met so that she could just kind of vent. And she certainly was not in a position to hear anything I had to say. So I just listened and I went home and wrote a song about it. And to this day, she has no idea <laughs> all the <laughs> that she gave me for the song. <laughs> yeah, I keep those stories like they don't, nobody knows. Who right. Was <laughs> and, and I think, you know, it's it's better kept that way. Yeah, I agree. So who are so I know you said you come from a musical family. Who are some of the um, some of your musical influences? Um, Musical influences, I would say like Mark Anthony is one of them. He is a great vocalist. Um, Brandy, oh, my gosh, that's like queen. Mm -hmm. Um. I like um, Stevie Wonder, Indiari. I think the, those are some of them. Um, and Salsa, you know, Los Hermanos Lebron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So um, when when people hear you sing, do they compare you your sound to anybody or your vocals to anybody? I've been compared to a few people. One, I mean, actually, one of them is, well, okay, so I... I have been compared to Mark Anthony, and I did this performance when I when I started um, to actually perform. And um, somebody said I'm like a young Stevie Wonder, which is like that's crazy. Huge, that, that's a that's great, problem. you know. That's that's great to hear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I I know some singers that I mean I like to hear people's perspective. Um, there's an amazing vocalist that I know, and a lot of folks compare him to Don Hathaway. And for mm. years, he just didn't embrace it. He was insulted and offended. And I thought, but that's a huge compliment to you. I mean, for me, people compare me to Stephanie Mills because I have a fast vibrato. She has a fast vibrato. I'm not trying to sound like her. I, I just do. Yeah. And I mean, it's a huge compliment. We all know? get inspired by somebody. Absolutely. 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 So tell us about your recording. Tell us about your project that I fell in love with. So what's so the name of the project? The name of the project is Superhuman. Mm -hmm. um, it has seven songs. Um, it's, you know, it's a little, I think it, it's a little bit of everything. It has a little bit of everything for everyone. Um, like it has r and I think it has a little bit of neo soul, a little bit of um, hip hop, a little bit of oh, what's um, like uh, Afro beats, mm -hmm. um, just a little mix of things. Um, and I, I just wanted to really showcase combo. all these right. different sounds. Wow. Okay. So I know that uh, you featured a young lady that I love and is a very good friend yes. of yours. Yes, Miss Gwendolyn Collins. Tell us about that collaboration. Oh my gosh! See, with Gwen <laughs> what's up, Gwendolyn? I know she's out there. Um, with that collaboration, like, I mean, it's so easy to work with her. Um, so she's featured on the title track of the project, Superhuman, and um, it was, you know, I, I I was writing this song, but I specifically wrote that first verse with her in mind because I've always um her music actually inspired me a lot too so I've always like I always told her oh I love your sound and you know that's how I got to start working with um Dawood Saeed that he produced a lot of the stuff um and mixed the project 
Um, but yeah, it, it's so easy to like, that's like the easiest person to work with. <laughs> So let me add another question for you. When you did your project, did you try to um, make it cohesive or did you just write from the heart? And it was, you know, some people will try to tell a story with an album. You know, for me, I just record what is on my heart and then I create the story after everything is done. What's your process? So superhuman. I've been recording songs, these songs for about 10 years. Out of the original lineup, there's only two of them. That, and Superhuman is one of the songs that um, is from the original lineup. But um, I've been recording these songs for 10 years. There's a lot of new stuff. The old stuff that I that did not make it onto there, I, I'm still going to release it on another project. But it mm -hmm. did have the storyline. It, it definitely did have a storyline when I first started recording it. Mm -hmm. You know, so your project is seven songs. And I love that you didn't do a full album because someone, um, you know, in the UK, it's a ton of all of the fans of independent artists, they're like music historians. And about six years ago, one of them said to me, never record a full album again, because you're wasting money, you're wasting music, because when people hear an album, they go pick and choose the ones that they want. And yeah. then it's great songs that because it didn't touch somebody the first time, they may not come back and give it a second, you know, a second listen. You know, how do you feel about that? You, I mean, I, I totally agree. I know I've listened to, um, I've listened to, and I, I talk about this with a lot of my friends, I've listened to certain albums where they're just really long. And some of the songs just, to me, they sound like just fillers. Like, let me just place these songs in here so it could just be a longer album. And honestly, I think that, especially now, people's attention span is so quick. I, I don't think people want a large amount of songs, but they do want quality. Um, yeah, and what's the point of having a really long album when you don't, when the but person's you know not gonna listen to every song or they're just gonna pick choose? But, and, you know, it's so interesting, though, because I know, for instance, Emily Sandy, when her one of her records came out about maybe four years ago and I purchased it, it was 17 songs. Yeah. And you're right with the attention span. I mean, I think she's amazing. But because we're all super busy, by the time I got to the third song, I had to go do something else. Then I come back and listen yeah. again. I have to go do something else. So, um, yeah. So I know for me, I'm recording um, an R&B EP because I'm mm. going to really take to heed the advice that was given, you know, especially considering who my fan base is just to give them five or six songs. And then if mm. I do two EPs in one year, they're listening to the whole album. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. It's an album's worth of music, but it's two separate projects. So yep. they're listening. So, but, um, so I tell you what, we're going to take a short pause for the cause and okay, cool. we will right back with Mr. Isma, amazing recording artist, R&B singer and songwriter. We'll be right back on the Tracy Hamlin show.
TV network. I actually flew down here today and it's been amazing. I'm going to be here for a minute handling some amazing business that we'll be sharing very soon. So we're chatting it up with amazing R&B singer and songwriter Isma. Isma, so the video that we saw during the commercial break, tell us about that song. The video is fire. The song is fire. Tell us about that song. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, the, the song, the, uh, so, I mean, it's chill back, relax. I think we've all gone through something similar, um, whether it's a relationship or a friendship, you know, people, sometimes people just want to exaggerate things and you just want to be like, listen, we, we don't need to argue about stuff. We can talk about it. We don't need to even like agree on everything, but as long as there's a line of respect, we can, you know, we can chill back, relax, and blow some steam. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The video was great. Where did you shoot the video? 
I shot the video in um in Florida. This was actually a year. Well, it's gonna be a year. Um, in May. Um, yeah, I shot the video in Florida. It was really dope. Um, I one of my really good friends, um, Keem. He was he helped me like with the whole outfits, all that stuff. And then um, the the female on the video, that's my niece. Um, and right. She came in last minute. She we went we were going to Miami. She came last minute. I was like, you know what? You're gonna be in my video. You have that, you know, what I'm looking for because her attitude is very sassy and fiery. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Even um, with the guest that was on before you, Joy Cato, we talked about how we often have to pull on our village mm -hmm. to help, uh, you know, move us along as independent artists, as small business owners. I mean, I know the last video I did, my husband was my love interest in the video because I said, hey, I don't have to pay you. Hey, come on over here <laughs> and be my love interest in this video. Right. right. And that as when we say we're independent artists, that means that we are the cash machine. Yeah. Behind everything that's happening. You know, we're the record label. We're the tour manager. We're right. the producers. You know, when it's when our own team. Yeah, when you see that we've done a video, we call this person, that person, and put it all together on a minimal budget. And But what I love today, so much of that hustle is what everybody is doing, yeah. you know? And it is just, you know, it's the thing that everybody's pulling on. So um, you don't have to be with the major, major labels to have any kind of success in the music industry. I tell right. people all the time, opportunity is not going to come personally knock on your door you have to put in the effort to control your own destiny. And that's, you know, when I see artists like you putting out music, I, you know, I have to go get it because we have to support, yeah. you know, you know, if we want to keep seeing independent artists come about and people that look like us and sound like us, we have to continue, you know, to support them. So um, earlier we talked about your musical influences in terms of overall composition. What would you say your favorite song is and why oh my gosh so i mean I, not to be biased but i have a lot of like the whole thing is my favorite <laughs> but, right. you're supposed to love everything that you do so yes absolutely that's a great answer <laughs> so i think i'll say like one standout for me is um caught up i love um backup vocals i love harmonies and i think that that's Real, that has a lot of backup vocals. It has a lot of vocals, and it's. I think it's a pretty big song. Um, and I love "Chasing Lies" because it's um very like I. It's very smoky. Like the, the piano is so beautiful, um, and inadequate. I like inadequate too. I think that's a great song. So I mean, I think just all of it is amazing. And that's why I reached out to you. I remember, you know, um, when your last single came out, I posted on my social media and I don't put a lot of uh, other people's music on my social media, but I just thought yours was, Thank I thought you it was so much. quality. And, you know, when you see that kind of quality, it's, you know, we have to stick together, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It makes the dream work. So, um, so what's next for you? So, you know, I just, I want to focus on pushing this project definitely because it just came out in February. Um, I do want to, I want some more visuals. Um, I want to write for other people as well. Um, so that's in the process as well. Um, and I'm working on a Spanish project. So I'm hoping by the summertime I have something brewing, but you know, I, I have a couple of songs already done, but I just want to get more songs done to start. And I want to push Superhuman because I got to give that its respect due as well. So I hate to put you on the spot, but can you sing just a little piece of Superhuman for us? Just a little piece. <laughs> Sorry for putting you on the spot. <laughs> You're that guy. You can go for it. <laughs> I can see so much better. When I believe I'm superhuman. Yes. Woo, 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 woo. 
Thank that's you. another favorite too. And thank you, Gwenny, for being on being on my superhuman track. Yes, did she did Gwen? Uh, let's say her name, Gwendolyn Collins. Look Gwendolyn her up. Collins. Call her Gwenny. Did she write or produce anything else on your record? No. So I um I wrote that song. I think it was like 2014. I wrote that song. Um, for a, it took me like 15 minutes to write it, and it was for a project. But I knew that as I was writing, I was like, "This, this is definitely the title track. This has to be on my project, and I need Gwenny on this." Gwendolyn Collins, diva. Uh, that's how I call her. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, as an independent artist, um, can you share a nugget of inspiration? with our audience today? Something that can inspire, motivate, encourage? I'd say um, stay resilient. Stay resilient mm -hmm. through everything that's especially going on today and mm -hmm. the past few years. You know, it might seem like things are going south, but we need to stay resilient. When I, when I sing, I am superhuman. It's mm -hmm. not something I sing because it sounds cute. It's mm -hmm. really something that comes within, like we are more than human. We are not more superhuman than our creator, but mm -hmm. we are superhuman. So anything that you're going through, just know that it's, it's just a moment and you can get through this. So stay resilient because we are superhuman. That is awesome. You and Joy Cato put down some nuggets of inspiration today. So Isma, tell us where can folks connect with you, stay in touch with you and find out about what's next for you? So you can stay in touch with me on, on Face. I have a Facebook, um, I-I-S-M-A space E-L on Instagram, Isma.E-L, I-I-S-M-A dot E-L. And I mean, on my website, www.ismamusic.com. Ismamusic.com. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, sharing thank about you for having me. I wish you nothing but the best and so much success. And I will be checking to see what's going on because I'm absolutely a fan. Can't hey. wait to see what's coming next. And a huge shout out and thank you to everybody joining us tonight. This is Dorothy Marie Hamlin's baby girl, Tracy Hamlin, signing off. Thank you again for checking us out tonight. We'll see you next week. Ooches of smooches. Thank you so much, Isma. Thank you, Tracy. I All appreciate right. you. My pleasure. Are you a jazz lover? If so, have we got something special for you. Presenting Tracy Hamlin's Sweet Jazz Concerts. The first concert of 2022 is Sunday, May 1st, with saxophonist Paula Atherton and the songstress herself, Tracy Hamlin, at the River Creek Country Club in Leesburg, Virginia. Sunday, May 1st at 4 p.m. For more information and tickets, visit www.sweetjazzconcerts.com. Sponsored by... Hey everybody, it's Tracy Hamlin reminding you to join us every Monday night for an entire hour. We are chatting it up with some amazingly phenomenal recording artists that you need to know about, as well as some incredible and inspiring small business owners from my area that you need to know about. So join us for an entire hour every Monday night. Leave a comment on my social media. Let me know who you've enjoyed and who we need to have on the Tracy Hamlin Show. See you on Mondays and Ooches of Spooches.